Welcome to the next decade of Market Buzz. I'm Greg Schnell, the Canadian Technician, and I'm here to host this unique show. We look for long time frame trades on weekly charts. Please follow me on Twitter, at Schnell Investor, or head over to my website, gregschnell.com. So we are trying to rally back after having a bit of a pullback Friday, Monday, and we're going to get into that today. I want to cover off a few things. Uh, the Dow is quite an interesting group of stocks right now, and so I'm, I'm going to go through one by one and check out those stocks, and I think you'll be surprised at what we see under the hood. So um, just briefly covering off, I forgot to change the date, sorry. Uh, briefly covering off uh, what we want to cover today, Fed announcement today, Britain leaves the EU on Friday, a little bit about China, Dow stocks, and and I mention a bull nose here because it's kind of narrow, actually. I was surprised at how many stocks aren't making new highs in the group, and uh, we're going to go check the charts. So first of all, let's just start off where, with where the market's at. So we've uh, been... a been uh, rallying up and down here. The S&P briefly dipped below zero and is now trying to rally back. Uh, bonds are off slightly. while well, they're off in um, yield today, but up in price. And then commodities are down again, and it's just been a continuous train out of town for those. So lots going on here, but we're going to cover the Dow specifically. So I'm going to just click on the Dow here, click on this chart. And go in what you see is we kind of pull back uh, for the last few days here and now all of a sudden we've tried to rally on the monday uh, um, off the lows and and we've been working our way higher and so the real question is how much horsepower do we have and can we get back above this previous level you can see the momentum here looks like it's just starting to wane already as we head into um, just trying to get a bounce on an intraday chart here uh, the Dow Jones Industrial has uh, bounced off a big trend line here that was just sitting here uh, trying to, to hold that. I think one of the things, this 50-day moving average is always a good place to expect the first bounce. But what we can see here is this trend line of higher lows on the PPO. Um, the uptrend is broken. Now we're still trying to hold on to this level of momentum. And then if so, we would just wob wobble sideways, continuing to make higher highs. On the weekly chart, um, the PPO has not rolled over yet. We have no sell signal there, but we do have a, a early sell signal on the full stochastic. My work says that the market's getting pretty thin, so we're going to continue to watch that. But um, the the big thing I think to uh, be aware of this week, obviously, uh, this last week, so back here on the 21st, right in here, was the... Uh, options expiration day and that was one of the days that I was worried about for a market uh, kind of stalling out and sure enough we haven't done anything since and now we're at the Fed meeting so now we're going to find out if there's anybody um, you know if the Fed's going to surprise us here and I don't expect any surprises but if that was to happen that would probably rock things pretty solidly. Um, here is the Dow or the, the Dow Jones for Great Britain. And so they, they have put together their index and it looks identical to the FTSE. The one thing I would say here is I want to point out that on Friday, Britain leaves the EU and look at how this chart has set up. We're in this narrowing wedge. We're trying to break through prior highs. And this is the monthly chart, of course. Um, and look at all my PPO. I'm sitting here with this upsloping trend line and we're just barely above zero. So this is a pretty interesting place on the chart for such a big change going on for England. Um, so we're going to watch and just see how this unfolds. My next chart is for uh, the weekly chart. And you can see here just continuing to try and push through these higher levels, but unable to do so so far. And our PPO momentum is rolling over right where we've rolled over before. So all of these things are adding up to make me quite interested to see how this goes. Again, you know, we're looking at a two-year top here and we're trying to hold the big uptrend of 2019. Obviously, this chart didn't perform quite the same as the U.S. chart, which is kind of off to the moon here with, with Apple in a leadership position. So... Anyway, that's uh, coming up here on Friday. That'll be the last day um, inside the EU. And we just want to watch this chart to see how it trades. But one of the things I like to do is to put the annotations right on the chart here. Britain leaves the EU and Boris Johnson elected um, 
when you put them right on here, I have another one on the French chart, Macron gets elected. Uh, and working through those different um, charts and you can go back in history and you know, all of a sudden it'll be three years later and you'll say, gee, that's when he got elected and not much has happened or whatever. Um, always good to kind of have those notes on the charts. One, yeah, let me just quickly grab the Shanghai Composite here. So obviously, um, their market's been closed for for uh, Lunar New Year's, and what we're working on here is this uptrend, downtrend, side trend. We gap down below the thirty fifty mark. We're trying to hold around the three thousand level, and of course, with their market closed, it's the um, the U.S. markets trading A shares and FXI and those types of charts that we get to look in and just see a little bit from. So here's the A shares. And what we see on this is a big downtrend off the 2015 high. We briefly broke through it on the back of the uh, announcement of the uh, trade agreement. And then, so this one was perking up a little bit better than actually the Shanghai Composite, but now quite clearly a gap down. So far this week, it's been trying to rally off the Monday lows and we're up against resistance now. So uh, both the 40 week moving average in green and this upsloping line. This chart's getting pretty interesting because of the narrowing place on the wedge. And the PPO is rolling over here. And again, um, I, I don't know how long the virus will last or how much effect it'll, it will have. Obviously, it'll have some effect, but I think more importantly is just, you know, most of the institutional investors, if they're going to start picking up shares, they're going to be looking to try and buy them on the dip. So I wouldn't get too uh, focused on, on the A shares going, um, you know, going way, way down or something like that. Perhaps if this is an opportunity to buy, you want to be, um, more focused on trying to figure out where institutions are starting to take their positions. This is the FXI. It looks slightly different, but not a whole bunch. You can see that the 2015 high is not above the 2018 high like it was on the on the A share chart, um, the A shares ETF. So with that, we're, we got back up here trying to break through the 2019 highs, rolled over. We're, we're sitting right at the 40-week moving average, slightly above it. But I think the big thing that we want to watch for here is just how severe does this chart break down and then can it it start to rally from here. Obviously, there's some support on, support on this one around 37.50. Pretty much need that to hold or $37 right in that level. Don't want to see that go away. So um, from a China perspective, those are those charts are... Um, I'll call it tension is in the air around the chart, but um, so far, no major breakdown. The... The chart of copper is uh, starting to worry me, and I'm a commodities guy, as everybody knows, so that, that one puzzles me. And here we see with copper trying to sit on this three-year trend line, horizontal support, call it 16 bucks. And if this starts to fail, I think that's a pretty big deal. So uh, we already have a sell signal on the PPO, and uh, again, you can see the negative histogram slightly, but you can also look over here, and when this third number has a negative sign in front of it, it means that the, the actual black line in this case is below the, the signal line. So uh, 0 0.50 is lower than 0 0.61 by this amount. Uh, but the idea being sometimes it's kind of hidden with the uh, histogram in the back. So always look at the legend, and that'll help you see whether or not it's in it's crossed below its signal line, et cetera. I think the bigger thing to worry about is that this is rolling over so close to zero. And obviously when things roll over close to zero, you end up getting pretty big down thrusts. So copper's very tentative here. I've mentioned it for the last couple of shows, but I think the, the concern we have coming up is that, um, you know, if all of a sudden we're gonna have a big slowdown in China, that's probably gonna uh, create bigger issues. Um, here's Tesla, and it hasn't done much in the last week, so I just wanted to mention that once um, once we get the earnings report out of Tesla, this will be interesting to see how it holds up. Obviously, it's been a parabolic move higher. For me, I like to draw a trend line up here on this parabolic move, and if that starts to break down, then I'd probably be an interim-term seller where I'd let somebody else own it while the stock starts to consolidate. Not trying to pick a high, but trying to make sure you take some profits out of something that's moved up aggressively. And then uh, let's go look at Apple because they reported last night. 
And uh, what we see on the chart here, maybe. Here we go. Okay, so uh, pretty wide candle. So we have an outside bar this week. Let's go into the daily view and just see what's going on. And on the daily view, uh, we gapped higher to open, and now we're just sitting here with a doji right on earnings. So uh, we'll we'll just watch and see if this ends up being indecision. We do have a higher high on momentum here, but we've pulled back slightly. So if all of a sudden we kind of touch and roll over like JP Morgan did, that would be a, a bit of a problem. So with that, um, Apple looks okay. It's, I mean, the chart's beautiful, everything trending up. I, I think I heard on the news the other day that there are new wearables, so the watches and the earbuds um, or ear pods are uh, bigger than the revenue from Starbucks. So that's quite amazing, actually, to see that the company's been able to grow that fast. So anyway, with all of this going on, Apple is clearly one of the leaders. Um, we'll see Microsoft is also one of the leaders. Um, here's American Express, and this chart's actually been pretty smooth as an uptrend. In terms of relative strength, it's not really outperforming the S&P 500. We do see this kind of sideways um, action here. And what I want to know is, does it have the horsepower to keep going here, or does it stall while trying to get through the prior high? And this is quite important, and the reason it's important is obviously it's in the credit sector, consumer finance, and we've seen, we'll see JP Morgan has rolled over to a tune of about six week lows. Here's Boeing, and again, uh, they reported big negative earnings, but nobody seems to want to let it fall below this 300 level. So we're going to watch this stock kind of hold around here. And then the real question is, does it finally break down? But it's tr it's definitely holding in this 300 level. And it uh, doesn't seem to matter how much pressure um, they get from non-financial performance, from borrowing money, from whatever. Um, we I think we all know that it's in an oligopoly where they control the market pretty significantly. So... This stock is definitely not breaking down. And again, it hasn't helped the Dow, but it hasn't really hurt the Dow as much as I thought it might. Caterpillar, on the other hand, is rolling over quite quickly. So it spent about two months going sideways while the stock market was off to the races. And now we can see we've got a sell signal down here on the PPO momentum. So part of that could be due to metals and mining demand um, slowing in China in this all of a sudden starts to break down. So we'll keep watching this chart. I don't want to see the full stochastic on a weekly chart go below 50. Typically, that leads to more of a pullback. We've already got a sell signal here. So this chart's a pretty big caution. If I owned it, I'd, I'd probably want to make sure it doesn't give up the 40-week moving average. Um, it's just such a, a big name that uh, it should hold up. We're going to take a quick break here. We're going to um, slip out, and we're going to cover off... Um, an interesting show that's coming up 50 years on Wall Street with Ralph Akampura. Uh, we're going to cut away to a little um, uh, entertainment video just telling you what's coming up on that show, and then we'll be back right away. I was staring at the north wall of my barn. Okay. It's 70 feet long, it's about 18 feet high, and <laughs> just blank. And I said to myself, you know, 2017, I'm going to be 50 years in the business. Wouldn't it be cool if I could just put the history of the stock market? That's where the idea came from. I wanted to capture my 50 years. Okay, we're back and we're continuing our look through the Dow Jones 30 um, stocks. And again, they aren't industrials anymore. There's kind of a mixed bag of financials and uh, manufacturing and uh, technology stocks in there. But the one thing I want to point out here is Cisco is really looking in a, an odd place. So we've had a big rally and Cisco's relatively speaking. Um, so here's the December low. It's rallied a little bit in the last six weeks. But I would just say, you know, considering the big rally started in October, we haven't gained any ground. And here we are, we see the stock um, stalling under the 40-week moving average for the first time since, well, way back in 2015. Uh, but here it looks like it's going to start breaking down again. 
and we see momentum rolling over below zero, I find that amazing that one of the big tech stocks in the world um, isn't going to be able to get above zero here and momentum would roll over. So anytime I see momentum rolling over below zero, uh, very worried about the stock. So Cisco looks ill to me. And unless it really starts to get some big rally going, I think that's a, a very cautionary place. Chevron, of course, crude oil moving back $13 in 13 days. That'll probably pull back most oil stocks. Um, it, it's still sitting in its sideways range. It almost looks like a Boeing here where it just goes sideways and it doesn't really matter what the price of crude's done. It hasn't got the momentum to break out to the top side. But this chart is holding up much better than ExxonMobil Mobil will see in a bit. We've got a big downtrend here on momentum. We're, we're currently just below zero, so not a place I really want to be. But I think as long as this kind of 110, 105 area holds, probably will still want to hold it. I'm surprised at how well the stock has held up. Um, obviously, it's held by a lot of institutions just because of its position in the Dow and the S&P. But the, the big thing to watch here is this sideways ranging action. We're near the low of it. If there was a bounce opportunity, we're probably getting pretty close to it, so you might want to use a shorter time frame and just see. Um, I continue to, to watch the energy sector. We, we got the um, bombs hitting the Baghdad embassy in, the, in Iraq, and you know the market hardly reacted to that, so it was good everybody was out. But I think more importantly, uh, very difficult that, uh, that that's still going on. Didn't seem to rattle the energy market at all yet, so I'm very puzzled about how the market starts to respond there. And of course, we've got the, um, the Middle East uh, visit right now uh, regarding Palestine so that and Israel. So that one is also contentious. We'll see how all of this shakes out in terms of the price of oil and see if that causes more uh, violence or less violence over in the Middle East. We have Disney here. And I must admit, I did not expect Disney to fall below its 40-week moving average. I did not expect it to break this uptrend. And, you know, I thought the stock had broken out to new highs here. What we saw is as it broke out to new highs, look at this lower high in momentum it's put in. So earnings are next Friday or Thursday. I think the big thing um, we'll need to, actually it might be Tuesday. I think the big thing we need to be aware of is, um, you know, does it have the ambition or the strength to turn around and start going higher? Or does this make a lower high, lower low and start to go below zero? And there's a lot of commentary out there about the, um, the streaming service they've just offered that it's great and all that kind of stuff. Maybe that's already priced in and the market just wants a, a reprieve here. But I was stunned to see Disney below the uptrend line making a lower high in momentum. And I, I actually expected the stock to continue. Now, um, if it comes down here and bounces off zero in momentum, as long as it maintains positive momentum, you're going to be in some sort of an uptrend. Albeit this one seems to be a wildly swinging one. We've given up it was 130 to 150 and we're back at 135 so um a little bit of a surprise that uh it's so wobbly i'll call it um looking at dow dupont uh what we see here is this chart is pretty much straight down nothing really helpful here and uh looking across you know we're at new three or four year lows here so that chart's pretty weak and then Goldman Sachs, uh, they have an investor's day today. So very interested to see how the market responds. There's a couple of reasons for my interest. One is that we have this uh, prior high back in 2017, a brief breakthrough in 2018. Uh, the, the market breakdown in September 2019 or 2018 was at the same level. And here we are, we've hovered here for three or four weeks now. And so we've had Goldman's earnings day. Now we have investors day, first one ever. And so we're watching to just see it. Can the stock maintain its up thrust or does it start to roll over here? The PPO says it's right on its momentum line and I wouldn't want to start to see it turn down here, especially right after an investors day. Looking at, at uh, Home Depot, this chart continues to be in a nice uptrend. Nothing wrong with the chart. Uh, briefly pulled back in November, December, and is now trying to take out prior highs. I would say, you know, chart still looks good. I don't really like this much lower momentum coming in here. Again, the S&P 500 continued to the moon. Apple continued to go to the moon. And this chart, even with the great uh, home building 
stats and housing starts and that kind of stuff. Um, this chart's got a significantly lower uh, momentum curve here. So if it was to roll over and fall right here, that's the kind of thing you want to watch for. Uh, that would be something like what happened in September 2018. So you come off a really high momentum and then the next time you check the high, you have lots or significantly less momentum and all of a sudden you fall away. So IBM, uh, this chart's actually quite impressive from the perspective that, that, you know, considering all the negative quarters it's had, it fell hard, obviously, in 2018. But it's been consolidating sideways on the back of the Red Hat uh, purchase. And uh, it shot up briefly last week. I think this was earnings and then ended up closing near the low of the bar. But this week it is traded very tightly didn't make a new low this week, which almost everything else did, uh, a lower low on the weekly. So the chart's holding in nicely here. And the real question is, does this chart start to turn up? And if I didn't look at the, the name on the ticker symbol, I would say the one thing I like is when a stock comes down from above and it doesn't come racing down, it just comes gently down and it starts to look to turn up here. And maybe IBM will end up being the story of 2020 where it starts to break out above these prior highs. Uh, too early to say that, but at least on earnings, look at the volume increase here. It shot up to one of the highest positive volumes going back almost all of last year. So there's some people starting to look at the stock. And again, it ended up being all the way up and all the way down. And the stock was just barely positive on the week. But I still think there's some interest showing up there in terms of volume. And we might have a bigger play available. Um, Intel, this chart's really nice, obviously, breaking out to new highs last week and just kind of holding it this week. Um, uptrend in momentum, but we're clearly up near the top, but it can stay up here for a long time. Um, so we'll keep watching that one. That one's one of the nice positive surprises. J&J, &J, this chart looks fabulous, breaking out from a two-year high. And, you know, considering all the lawsuits and everything else, I like the fact that this downtrend in momentum is broken, starting to turn higher and it continues to push up. So um, as a, a defensive stock, it looks pretty good. JP Morgan has rolled over here and is now below its 10 week moving average, sitting around six week uh, lows um, on Monday, trying to rally, but it's already put in a sell signal. I think this on the PPO, I think the thing to watch here is does it just come down to this trend line and then start to turn back up again? Again, they know how to make money, so they'll figure this out. Um, but right now, the stock's pulling back a little bit after earnings. Coca-Cola up nicely on trend here. And so if you notice, we've got setups in Coca-Cola, Johnson & Johnson. Um, you'll see the setup here in Walmart. We're starting to see some of the defensive names outperform some of the more um, growth-oriented names. Not Apple, not Microsoft, but um, some of the other names. Okay, so we've got the PPO trending higher here. Again, if, if this starts to roll over, what you're going to end up having is, is a lower high while price makes a higher high and that negative divergence would be something to watch. Um, we don't have that yet. Still, stock is trending higher. We'll keep watching it to see which way it wants to, to go. McDonald's Corporation, what we see here, um, PPO um, is still trending higher. It reported today, put in an outside bar, so it was lower than last week on Monday. And then uh, so far today, it's still trying to test and get through these prior highs. Again, they replaced their CEO, I think it was in December. Um, so the, the new gentleman on the job is, um, is trying to take over in the middle of a bit of a rush change. Uh, we'll see if the stock can turn up, but I do like it that the PPO has come down to zero, starting to rest and, and perhaps go higher. And again, they introduce some new chicken sandwiches or something this week. Uh, 3M, this chart doesn't look like a growth chart. Um, straight down uh, for two years here and a really, really, really uh, ugly price bar this week going below the 10 week and the 40 week. And we're sitting right around zero on the PPO. We've been down here for a while. Do not want to see this stock start to fail over and over in the same place. But we had a big earnings gap down here in April. Looks like another one here in January. So these are not um, nice to look at. Merck reports next week, but big uptrend here coming down to touch the 40 week moving average. That's been support for a couple of years now. So the real question is, does it bounce out of here? We've got a drift lower in momentum and I, I can't imagine, um, you know, that it's that bad a chart, but 
or not bad a company, but it looks to me like momentum wants to roll over again, heading into earnings. So uh, very interesting to see it break the trend line already before earnings. Microsoft, uh, obviously up, up and away. Apple and Microsoft, clearly the, the two uh, Budweiser horses pull in this uh, market along. So Nike heading up top right corner. I'm pulling back a little bit this week, probably on some sales issues in China, perhaps. But um, stock still looks okay. I am surprised that it's making a lower high in relative strength than a higher high in price. So that's a little bit of a caution for me that it, on this most recent rise, it, it actually underperformed the S&P 500 while getting up there. Looking in on Pfizer, this one's clearly breaking down. So remember Merck starting to leak, Pfizer um, leaking below the 10 week, the 40 week and the uptrend line, PPO rolling over just around zero. That isn't a very comforting factor. So that's another large cap that's looking a little iffy. Procter and Gamble still okay. PPO up at a very high level here, pulling back slightly. Uh, price chart is okay, looks all right, nothing to to complain about, might be able to break through six month highs here right away. The travelers, this chart is traveling the wrong direction, headed south and, and we seem to be failing at the 40 week moving average and now pulling down. Again, I haven't marked the earnings dates on all of these charts, but I think um, pretty significant to see these start to roll over. Here's another health stock rolling over, a little bit of a surprise again, um, starting to go below the 10 week moving average, PPO rolling over from a very high level. We'll have to watch and just see if it starts to get any sort of strength here. Uh, United Technologies had a pretty uh, good earnings report. We're sitting um, right around the 10 week moving average. We've gone sideways here for five weeks and we've got this big uptrend line that we'd like to see hold in momentum. Probably don't wanna see it go uh, below that, but we're sitting uh, barely positive here. So any sort of pullback um, later this week or next week would probably kick this into somewhat of a short-term sell signal. Strong company. Looking at Visa, I mean, this Visa chart, Microsoft chart, Apple chart, all very, very um, nice. Look at how smooth this ride is. It's just about like going up to a parking garage or something. It's just beautiful. Um, anyway, PPO is pulled down here um, in October, November, December, was kind of flat. Now all of a sudden had a couple of big weeks and uh, we're sitting here with a, a lower high, lower low so far this week. Um, again, I'm not expecting Visa to go out of business anytime soon. So that's a pretty nice chart. Here's Verizon and what we see on Verizon again is this big uh, wedge pattern. And in this wedge, uh, much like J&J &J, just starting to break out to the upside. Uh, this one looks more interesting from a perspective that if it can start to, to pop above this line here, um, you know, pays a 4% yield. So worth watching with the 5G rollout coming. Um, here's Walgreens Boots Alliance. And I wanna highlight this chart as one of my favorite setups. And the reason is the PPO comes above zero, starts to pull back. And then what I wanna see is it start to turn back up again. So we, we have, a primary downtrend, then we start to turn up here, pull back, try to break above that line again. Now we've created another one here. I would just say, I expect the low to hold. If this starts to turn up at all, this could be a pretty interesting stock for 2020. And Walmart, um, big, big, big giant uptrend, down testing the 40 week moving average below the 10 week. All of this needs to hold. Again, I still think it holds and it goes higher, but this is a pretty important chart. So if I was to summarize, I'm surprised at how many charts are actually starting to roll over and pause here. Um, and, and obviously the three big names are, are running, but um, stay cautious on them. There's some in there that I was surprised at how much they're turning down. So thanks for taking the time to join me on Market Buzz. Market Buzz airs Wednesday and Friday at 10.30 a.m. Eastern. You can also see the recordings on Stock Charts TV. Don't forget to get, catch the Ralph Show at noon. Thanks, everybody.